How do I start a food truck in Michigan? And the other question we're going to cover in the podcast is, do food trucks need a commissary in Michigan? These are two great questions as to how to get a food truck successfully running and profitable in the state of Michigan. And on this podcast, which we'll upload onto our YouTube channel of Food Truck Freaks, we are going to cover those two questions in particular. So welcome to Food Truck Freaks. My name is Damian Roberti. I am a food entrepreneur. This is our fourth channel, our fourth food entrepreneur channel that is here on YouTube. I am not new to the food industry. I've been around for 30 plus years working since I was a teenager in restaurants and then managing and then eventually getting into owning my own Italian bakery. I also teach and have over 5 million views on our other channel with over 50 countries taking advice from our Marketing Food Online YouTube channel. So Food Truck Freaks is all about the food truck industry and giving you tips and pointers. And as we grow this channel, which is brand new, we're going to upload some content where we're going to be interviewing uh, food truck, successful food truck entrepreneurs, giving you tips and tricks on how to create one yourself. Now, let's dive into this specifically. Michigan, the state of Michigan, um, starting a food truck business there is a great idea. Why? Because a lot of people are quitting their jobs. Obviously, as many of us know, if you watch any of the news and online, you can definitely see that there's a lot of people who are not satisfied with what they're doing. And many of them are getting into food type of businesses and one of them being a food truck. So now Michigan has a couple of really unique features about owning and operating and even permitting and licensing as far as that's concerned in the state of Michigan, unlike a lot of other states. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over those couple of specific things. There's about three things specifically I wanted to cover that's really unique to Michigan. And then I'm going to go over the list of permits, which is a pretty standard list of permits across the board for anyone in pretty much any state when it comes to food trucks and starting one. So what they have is a mobile food unit licensing is actually what it's called. And by the way, we also have a ton of free resources down below this video, directly below the video in the description. Click on that link that'll take you to our website. I have a blog with all these other additional links to Michigan State websites. These are links directly to the state of Michigan website about the mobile food licensing so you can learn even more than what I'm going to teach you here. So definitely check out that link and head on over to our blog. We have a huge website up and running that will help you out. So if you license and operate um, as a mobile food unit actually in Michigan, the, the, the food law there requires you to return the unit to a licensed commissary once every 24-hour period. So that means you're going to need to find a commissary kitchen, which if you're not familiar with what that is, it's like a commercial kitchen in a sense. It's a place where you can prep your food, um, empty out your day's water, get some clean, fresh water for your, your unit, the actual food truck, dispose of your trash, safely park it there. But your food truck will be actually kind of, quote unquote, attached to that specific location. So that commissary kitchen, which is required, will kind of be your, your home office, if you will, okay? So in Michigan, they actually require this. Not every state does, believe it or not, um, but there are a handful. And I believe Florida is another one that does, and so does California. <clears throat> but Michigan actually does. So you must own or have a legal agreement actually to operate out of that specifically that licensed commissary. So keep that in mind. A licensed commissary is legally no different than pretty much um, any other requirement of food service restaurant, just like a fixed food service restaurant, as I mentioned. So you definitely want to be attached to a commissary. You need to have a legal binding agreement with them as well. Now, this is where <clears throat> what I'm about to cover is, is the really other unique thing that Michigan offers. It's called a special transitory food unit licensing. So what is that? So um, a special transitory food unit license basically allows your food truck, okay, or your push cart to operate without returning to a commissary every 24 hours and without the need to be associated with a licensed commissary kitchen. So this is a specifically different type of license, but still within the state of Michigan. Um, at a special transitory food unit, you can travel to any location within the state of Michigan and operate for any amount of time without returning to that home county. Now that's really unique because a lot of states within the cities and counties, as you cross over, there's a lot of other legal things that you need to have business. You actually have a business license in some cases. If you cross over to a different city, you'll have to have a different uh, separate, separate business license to operate there. Um, so it's quite different and very unique. Now, as one of these units, you got to understand also one other thing that's really tr crucially important is as a special transitory food unit must carry a standard operating procedures at all time. The S SOP is its known. I'm sorry. Uh, so it must be reviewed and approved by the health department in the licensing county in which 
You will be included to detail all the information regarding water sources, water waste disposal, food handling, handling and disposal of, of uh, ref refuse as well, um, any of the leftover scraps and things for the day, okay? So that's something that's super unique to Michigan, and there's a whole bunch of other great information that they have on their website. I'll actually, like I said, have that in the link below. Um, check that out. So what type of permits and licensing from the legality standpoint would I need to have, Damien, to start a food truck in Michigan? Now, the following is going to be uh, not a particular order, but it's actually going to give you a bunch of really great information. These are all need, these need to be pretty much purchased or, or you need to get them um, within a certain reasonable time before you open as much of the states require. So number one, seller's permit. So some cities need a seller's permit to allow food service operators to acquire materials and supplies at wholesale cost without paying sales tax. This is the same type of actual thing that we actually have too with our candy and snack business. So we don't pay twice on taxes um, on the purchases of ingredients. So as a food truck operator, as you know, you're going to be buying ingredients, right? Fresh pro produce, vegetables. You're going to be getting meats. You're going to be getting all kinds of maybe breads and baked goods. So whoever your vendors are, whoever you're getting them from, make sure you don't pay tax on that because you're actually supposed to collect sales tax at the end once you've combined those ingredients to create a finalized product and you sell that to a customer, you need to collect sales tax and remit it to the state of Michigan, okay? So <clears throat> basically what it does is that it doesn't tax you twice so the tax would be collected when the product is sold to the buyer, okay? Number two, fire certificates. Now, in certain counties, not only the health department, but also the fire department will need to check your food truck, okay? In most circumstances, this will only be required if your vehicle has culinary equipment and gas connections, okay? If you're just selling chilled food, okay, or you've got some, uh, you probably won't be required to actually have this inspection done, but it's always a good idea to double check with local specific city ordinances in regards to this. The fire department, basically how it works is they will inspect your cooking equipment for appropriate installation and operation. Also make sure that it's working properly because you obviously don't want any fires to break out on your vehicle because that is your business, okay? It's different than just driving a car around. If a car catches fire, that's not your business. So your business is on wheels and you need to make sure everything is working properly, especially if you buy a used vehicle. Okay, so the fire department will inspect your cooking equipment for appropriate installation operation, as I mentioned, as well as any electrical wiring, whether or not the vehicle has fire suppression systems on it. Now, number three, the next one up, this was really unique. This is something that a lot of first time food truck uh, owners are not aware of this, but you actually have to get parking permits in most cities and counties and most states that all also offer uh, food truck licensing, you have to pay for those permits, those parking permits. So you might want to check with your local county clerk to see whether parking permits are required in the locations where you want to actually serve your food. Some streets may be completely off limits to food trucks or that they may be restricted by a certain time and certain day. So keep that in mind too. Sometimes you can go in a certain area, but you can't do it in certain times. Um, other cities have dates that are set specifically for food trucks to decrease traffic and to make sure that the appearance of the streets are open and clear. That's something you want to be aware of as well. Now, next one up is the commissary letter agreement. So what specifically is the commissary letter of agreement? As I mentioned in Michigan, you have to actually have one. So before getting out <clears throat> for the day in your food truck, your city may actually require you to keep supplies and prepared meals in a commissary kitchen. If that is the case, which it is of course in Michigan, you could also be required to have a commissary letter agreement, which is basically, it's a signed document between you and the commissary owner that confirms your access to the facility and services you're allowed to use on the site. So the commissary would give you the ab ability to use a cooking area, have access to fresh water, uh, garbage collection, food storage, etc. Okay. Now, what is that SOP, Damien, you mentioned about SOP? Um, Standard Operating Procedures Documentation. Now, this is, although it's kind of uncommon in a lot of cities, there are a few cities and counties that may require food truck operators to submit a standard operating procedures paper before they even open to the public, okay? So what this document really is, it details the steps you and your team use to complete jobs on the food truck. So basically categorizing, cataloging the, the actual processes for you to prepare the food, serve the food, and, and hold the food, obviously, and keep it you know sanitary and clean, and within the temperature it needs to be kept. The next one up, special events permit. Yeah, so believe it or not, a special events permit, sometimes it's actually known as a vending permit, is a temporary authorization that permits you, the food truck owner, to sell food at a specific area during an event. So most athletic events, festivals, concerts will have an event planner who can tell you about specifically many sorts of permits and permissions, um, licenses required for you to sell food on the premises, okay? So 
you definitely want to keep that in mind. All right, so you've got that taken care of. So special events, keep that in mind. You may actually need to get a temporary vendor's license or permit to operate at a special event. So make sure you contact, obviously, the one in charge of that event, no matter what that is, and ask him, what do I need to get in order to be a part of this event? And those are issued based upon the duration of the event alone, okay? Now, let's see, next up. These are some of the basic beginner stuff. So the next one is business license. If you're gonna operate, obviously, a food truck, you need to make sure that your city or county issues you. Uh, and then, by the way, every time I say city or county, just to explain what I mean by that, a lot of times, depending on where your business is located, you may actually need to ta contact the city that you live in. Or if you're outside the city and you're in a certain county, it might be just a local business office within that county. Okay, So that's the reason why I keep saying the city or county depends upon the state and the course where you are and the city and county you live in. All right, so you have to have a business license. This is basically also often known as a vendor license or basic business operations license. It goes by several different names. Of course, every state is slightly different. Uh, permits you to run a business in the specific city or state that you are in. So the government will recognize your activity as a real business, as a food truck. Keep in mind that is has to be a food truck as well, okay? So a food truck business license might cost anywhere between about 60 to maybe $400 Sometimes it could go up to about six or seven hundred, depending on your city's application fees and those requirements, because sometimes there are certain requirements on top of the application. Okay. Now make sure that you're aware of your license expiration date. This is super critically important and how to renew it. This is something that we go through every year. There, there's about 10 or 12 licenses and permits that we have to renew, but it's annual. Okay. So we do that annually and we do it online. It takes two or three minutes. It's very quick. But be aware of that because if you over you have to let that lapse and you don't renew it, and you happen to be operating, you could actually get a fine or even get your truck shut down until you get that renewed. Some cities will only issue a limited number of mobile food vendor permits, putting new vendors in what's known as a lottery. So you got to make sure you apply as, as soon as you can, and once you're finished, make sure that food truck business plan is up and running as well, and you get those things set aside. Next one up is the employer identification number. This is the EIN. So what is an employer identification number for a food truck, Damien? Well, an employer identification number, often known as an EIN, or it's a social security number for your business in a sense, right? It's a federal tax identification number used to establish your business with the IRS, okay? So it enables you to register a business bank account, which you're obviously gonna need, establish a business credit profile, and of course, hire employees. This number is provided by some states along with your company licensing. So keep that in mind too. The IRS can also give you one of these, actually you apply for it online, it's absolutely free. So make sure that you definitely apply for that. The IRS will not charge you for that apps at all. <clears throat> Next up, valid driver's license. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, Damien, that's a no brainer. Uh, obviously a valid driver's license. Well, technically it's, it's not because a lot of food truck owners end up actually having one or two employees, right? And from time to time, that employee may be the one driving the vehicle. You need to make sure everyone on your staff has a valid driver's license and has it with them. If you get pulled over, you got to keep in mind, like I mentioned back at the beginning, your food truck is not just a vehicle. It's not just a truck. It's your business. And if somebody who's driving it is one of your employees and they get pulled over with no license, your business and you, the owner of the food truck, can be in some serious trouble. So you want to make sure everyone has valid driver's license and make sure they have it on them at all times. Okay. Next up, permit as a food handler. So a food handler's permit. So those who finish food handler training and safety courses are awarded a what's known as a food handler's permit. Now, this is sometimes known as a food handler's license or food management certificate. Some states will require this as well. Some cities and counties will also require it. Only the manager on shift is necessary to secure the permit in most states. But in some cases, everyone, including your employees on your food truck, will have to take that course and make sure that they have that certificate available. Okay, so next up and lastly is the permit from the Department of Health. So the health department issues a permit often known as a food service license because you are serving food. So it's obviously called a food service license. This basically is indicating that your vehicle has passed the health inspection. Pretty much like a, if you, you look at any type of brick and mortar restaurant or cafe or eatery, the health department needs to come in and inspect and make sure it's obviously running clean, cleanly uh, a clean and it's sanitary, food is being served properly, it's being kept at certain temperatures, whatever it may be, all of that gets checked off, okay? 
Uh, depending on the city itself, health department permits may cost anywhere from about five, uh, you're looking at about $50 up to, I've heard even $1,000 annually. Depends on the actual city and county and what they decide to do. Okay. So that is all in all what you need to know and expect when it comes to starting a food truck in Michigan. If you have any questions about starting a food truck, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to create some content. We're building this channel up, so we'd love to create videos to help you guys out. And also check out the, uh, the links to our other YouTube channels for other food entrepreneur endeavors. If you know anybody who could benefit from food, food truck freaks, please let them know and share our, our channel with them and our videos. We definitely appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on our next video.